My younger self, I would say, to be more gentle with yourself. In so many ways, people want you to be far older than you are. But you're 13, you're 15, you're 17, you're young. There's room to fall. Staying at the mosque overnight with my friends. It's a fond memory to me because my father managed the mosque and so I took a pride and importance in being able to be there. I still go to the mosque and stay overnight. There's a practice called Yatikaf where you do it during Ramadan and I try to so I can isolate myself from the world of desire and of chasing things constantly through the year. You know, it's just a moment of stillness for me. In a lot of ways, I wanted to be loved. It may seem cliche, but it would change constantly depending on who I was around. Sometimes I wanted to be a basketball player, but that's only because that's what my friends wanted for themselves. And other times I wanted to be an imam. Perhaps even poetry was a thing I thought I wore well and other people enjoyed seeing me in that light. How that changes now is that I'm kind of trying to move into a light and identity that is my own, you know? It's like, even what I'm wearing, like what, I, what I'm doing now, it's all a thing that my younger self would be shocked at. And I think it's a beautiful thing that I can continue to shatter all those walls to the potential of what I would have loved for myself when I was younger. I think now I'm trying to take those tools that I sharpened to tell my own story. I've always been seen as a vulnerable person, but the thing is I don't actually think I was. I just was uh, good at intellectualizing my emotions, but it's possible to intellectualize your emotions without experiencing them. As time goes, I realize that Islam gives me the wonder that I need to explore, you know, because it's all about the afterlife. It's all about transition. I'm just trying to find time to explore all that I love before that transition, you know, and beautify you know, whatever it is that I'm given. It can be taught in so many ways, faith, you know, and I think a lot of times there is a shame around the way in which we receive faith. But I thank God through my sisters and some other family members, I was able to learn maybe the peace and the, the gift of what faith was as well. Everything should be dealt with with a devotional quality. Basketball game, whether you win or lose it, you know, accepting the loss with a devotional quality, accepting the win with a devotional quality, whatever it is, it's like everything should be dealt with with grace and it should feel like ceremony. There is room to discover, there's room to cry, and there's room to stop and not chase it and to look before you and to find something maybe less glamorous or less desirable, but more fulfilling for you. The true success is being able to experience the time and be present as it's happening. I'm saying that to you and I'm saying that kind of to myself though, simultaneously, because I'm still not in that place completely. I think one fond memory I have of my brother is, I remember going to New York City for the first time when I was 15. The only thing that I brought back with me was a gift for my little brother, you know, a pair of shoes. And it was like the beauty of being able to see the vastness of secondhand joy. Our minds always find ways to place borders around our joy. And also it's like my first time ever caring for someone more than I cared for myself. I think there were just some cartoon characters that gave me a lot of hope. Sailor Moon gave me hope. Kim Possible, the Powerpuff Girls, just watching something that was in an alternate universe and women and that kind of power and grace, but beauty was always prioritized as well in the midst of them saving the world. And I found that to be incredibly inspiring and hopeful. That was the beginning of my exploration of, uh, of writing. I used to write like fan fictions about some of those uh, cartoon characters and extend you know episodes that I didn't want to end I would I would uh, write alternative endings to them anything that preserved my wonder I uh, I held very close to me it was a beautiful time I would just love to hear what he has to say to me <laughs> I think I, what I would say to myself in 10 years is that 
you really did what you could and you stopped when you could. And when I think of myself 10 years ago, I'm critical of what I thought I did and how much energy I actually put into my craft and into my relationships and into my attention to the world around me. But now, in this present moment, I know that I'm doing everything I can. I just hope the person 10 years from now is aware and is gentle and is fond of the person that he was because the person that he was is doing everything in preparation of who he is now. Thank you.